Here we have the two primary types of insulation used to insulate the exterior walls of existing homes. This is cellulose insulation, which we demonstrated how we dense pack it into walls. And you can see here again, it's nice and tight, uh, never going to settle. It's going to do an amazing job insulating, keeping the house warmer, less air infiltration, and bugs don't like it because it can't, uh, it has boric acid in it. It's an irritant to them. It also can't catch fire and it makes the house safer as a result. This here is the most, uh, the other common type of insulation used. This is what you call uh, tripolymer foam or water-based foam, maybe um, shaving cream foam, some people call it. What it is absolutely not is spray foam. This is not the polyurethane stuff that you see sprayed on TV shows that looks great and performs great. Um, this stuff goes in wet and it's water-based and usually I should say what it has a tendency to do is shrink after it's installed into the stud base because what happens is that as it cures, the water that's in it evaporates, the, sh the foam then shrinks as a result, so it can develop convection currents around it on the inside of your walls, and that reduces the overall R value and performance of the insulation you had put in. And, uh, you know, there's some photos of that out there, and we've seen plenty ourselves doing estimates. But you can see the stuff is just, it's kind of uh, brittle and powdery and breaks apart. So if the house is going to shift at all over time, uh, you can have this happen in the walls. And we see a lot of pictures where the foam is completely shattered and broken looking, and there's big gaps that form from it. So we don't like it because we don't trust it. We want what we put into the homeowner's walls or garage ceiling to be exactly the way it is the day we leave, um, as it could be in 20 or 30 years if you go back and infret it. I should also mention that before I learned about dense pack cellulose, I actually installed water-based injection foam with two different companies back in 2008. And I recall seeing the marketing videos and thinking, wow, does that stuff look effective? However, after witnessing it fail due to shrinkage issues several times in person and not wanting to sell customers a solution that I myself no longer trusted, I decided to find a better option for insulating walls. And that is what we will look at next. What we're going to do here now is demonstrate how the dense packing process works when used with cellulose insulation. Now, the reason that we're such big fans with it here at InsulWise is because we know that when we do this process right, that we hit all of the exterior bays and the exterior walls, like here, or in a garage ceiling, any closed cavity space, basically. And people ask us, hey, well, how do you know where the studs are? Well, the way that we find the studs is by going through and using a solid metal probe and then finding the studs and going, okay, there's a stud here. You need to go over here and drill another hole. Now, we don't have additional holes running this way because we know that there's a masonry chimney uh, just on the other side of the wall. Now, the reason that we prefer doing this as opposed to drilling little holes in the mortar is because when you go through brick from the outside of the home, it's a lot more hoping than knowing. You simply can't tell where the studs are because you can't probe them. You just have to rely on a tape measure and luck. So the process works by taking a, a fill tube here, running it inside the stud bay all the way up to the top of the wall. When we hit the top of the wall, the fill tube is up against the top plate. We turn the machine on, and then the insulation is going to bounce off of the top plate, fall all the way down to the bottom of the bay, gradually work its way back up, and then our machine out in the truck that has a very powerful blower motor in it is going to tightly pack that insulation around the end of that hose. And as it packs, it eventually will fill all the way in that one area. And then we just back our hose out in one foot increments and we'll see how this process works. So you can see and hear the cellulose running up into this bay right now. We've got some fiberglass in some of these other bays here, just to minimize the dust coming into the room, but you can see that we've got everything covered with plastic drop cloths as well. You can tell by the sound that the bay is getting packed. Right now it's super compressing the insulation in just one area. Pull the hose back. And we've got a sponge here 
that also helps us minimize dust a little bit. Now we're going to pack the bottom of the bay. A little bit of a blowout. Turn the machine off. Keep a finger over the end of the hose. There's a little residual air pressure there. And then bring the camera in. You can see how tightly this is packed inside this bay. I can't even push my fingers through that cellulose insulation. So what that means is that any wire holes, any penetrations that um, outside air was moving to enter the structure, or even um, bugs and insects, that's permanently sealed. People will sometimes ask, well, cellulose insulation settles, doesn't it? The old school way of putting it in, it does. And we still have some people in our area that do it that way, using a much smaller hole to install the material. But when you use a fill tube to get it into the stud bay, and you use a machine like ours that has an airlock mechanism in it, this is the result. This will never settle. You can infrared this 10, 15, 30 years from now, and that insulation is going to be right in the top of that bay. This is a photo of what dense packed cellulose insulation would look like if you remove the drywall. In this case, this insulation was installed with a different method called wall spray that is used for new construction. But if you remove the drywall in a home after we dense packed it, it would look identical. You can see that the cellulose insulation fully envelops all of the wires, pipes, and outlet boxes that are inside the stud bays. Our team finished dense packing this homeowner's dining room two days ago, and when they were done, they installed one application of our plaster compound into the holes here. And you can see they're really pretty difficult to see on this white wall. And that's how they look. At this point, the homeowner, or if they hire a painter, is just going to have to do a little bit of a sand prime paint situation, and then they're never going to notice it again. The dense packed cellulose, cellulose insulation that we put into the walls, it's never going to shrink, it's never going to settle, it's never going to crack, it's going to perform perfectly as long as this structure is here. And lastly, because the holes are really low on the wall like this, it's not something that you normally see or would look at walking into a room. So they're actually very easy to hide.